Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. It's just two verses today. We tried to do, do two chapters last week, so you only get two verses today. The, um, today we're doing really, we're going to talk about and preach about the first half of the Lord's Prayer. We've already said it, okay? And the Lord's Prayer, as we recited, is a combination of the Matthew 6 passage and the Luke 11 passage, okay? So we're going to look just specifically today at the Matthew chapter 6. The, um, when you think about the Lord's Prayer, it's said across denominations. It's said around the world. Nobody fusses about how it's put together. We all agree. It's the Lord's Prayer. It's the most recited prayer ever done. We would say that and Psalms 23, they go together. Everybody knows them. Even many non-Christians know them. It's that well known. And yet sometimes it just becomes rote. We stop listening to what it says. We stop thinking about what is it that prayer is supposed to do in my life. Even more specifically... What is this prayer that God, that Jesus gave to the disciples when he says, this is how you should pray? So just listen at the very beginning. Over in Luke, one of the disciples says, Lord, teach us to pray. Here in Matthew, by the way, this is the, the big sermon or speaking parts of Jesus in Matthew. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. The linchpin for the Sermon on the Mount is this. It's right here. It's the center part. Jesus says, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. That first line, our Father who art in heaven, tells us immediately where God is, that heaven part. But that Father part, for some people, even in my own family, when they start to pray, they all of a sudden their voice changes. Dear righteous heavenly father. And they start off down that road. And I'm like, wait a second. I'm a little taken aback. But I think about my friend in seminary who, when she would start to pray, she'd go, Daddy. And in 2001, that just took me back as well. I'm like, wait a second. Daddy? Daddy? But then as I started to understand the word Abba in the Greek, they just said Daddy. They just said Papa when they did that. The thing is, and if you're filling in the blanks, prayer starts with a relationship. And the difference from, from oh, a righteous heavenly father to Daddy is that idea of relationship. Now, I realize not everybody in the room has a proper relationship with their dad. Or if you're in the dad figure that, okay, I realize that's not all perfect. I get it. My child wanted to live in Nashville and not because I'm a little overbearing. I'm glad you don't think that. Okay? But it is that sign of when you come to that, that moment that there's a relationship there. There's that trust that literally we were watching lived out in front of us just a few minutes ago with Lil and Carolyn. That I can trust God like we talked about last week. That I know him. That I know that he's going to be active in my life. It's not father in that high lifted up place but his dad. 
It's Father that I know that is going to be there that I can trust in the good days and in the bad. Prayer starts out of our relationship. So often in our prayers, and we don't do Wednesday nights, um, but some, and if you go to St. Mark, you can look down at the list of prayers down at the bottom. It's this laundry list of, of hurt feet and sickness and illness. And we have yet to pray for our community. We have yet to pray for the lost by name. We have yet to pray for anything other than our laundry list of our own personal needs. And Jesus taught the disciples to pray. It starts with who he is. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Prayer all of a sudden changes our focus from our own will to his. It starts when we start to pray and we start to allow ourselves to be poured out, it changes what we're actually praying about. And by the way, that's hard sometimes. I sit here in this room right now and I think of folks who have somebody that's sick, some, multiple people who have family members getting married. I think about Annette and Miss Brooks, loss. I think about somebody changing schools. I think about us as a congregation dealing with changing pastors. I can sit here and go, I get my laundry list. I got one. But it comes back down to his will, not mine. How is it that we're praying? What is it that's on your list? One of the reasons I ask, I've asked you over and over and I will continue to pray for somebody who is lost by name. Because I think when you do that continually, I think Scripture tells us this. I think I've seen it. Matter of fact, I know I have. That people will change their hearts, their ways about how they see people who are not in a right relationship with God. So the intentionality of what I'm asking. Because all of a sudden it's not about what can God pour out and what blessings can he have for me. Not prosperity gospel but that I might conform myself to the Heavenly Father. All of a sudden, by the way, folks, when you start praying this way and start living this way, you start looking like a disciple. Prayer will change our focus. It will change it from that list to His will. When you start praying that way, I think we will change the way we think and the way we see. I'm praying for next week very specifically. We're doing the old-fashioned picnic, but it's not the picnic that excites me. It's that we're going to have five people join the church, and we're going to have three adult baptisms. Okay? We're going to get to tell the story. By the way, the baptisms are going to be immersions. I'm bringing a baptistry up in here. The book of discipline says we can baptize however we want to. As long as, you know, it, actually the adults ask for this. Okay? And we're going to get to tell the story of what Christ does for us. I'm hoping that you will bring people that don't, that want to come and see what that's about. Because next week's about telling that story. We're going to talk about Jesus next week. The whole time. The whole story and all the symbolism. Okay, and God's grace being poured out. Because it is both. It is that repent and God's grace. That's next week's sermon. How many of you can cook? Miss Bonnie, you don't cook. Okay. I, I realize you may not cook like you used to. Now, Hannah, what can you do on cooking? I did not tell you I was going to do this. Brownies. You can do brownies, okay. Open pouch, insert egg, milk, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you can boil water, right? All right. 
That's all right. I sent your brother off about the same amount of abilities when he left home, too. Okay? All right. Many of us say we are cooks, right? All right? Some of us are better cooks than others. But I know plenty of people who say, I'm a cook. And they buy cookbooks and they buy candy thermometers because they're going to make candy or try to can stuff like somebody crazy in the room. They have all of these gadgets, but the only thing they ever really do is they put something on a grill, which there's more art to that than you believe, okay? <laughs> and they know how to boil water. They got all of these cookbooks, all of these gadgets, but they never do anything with them. How many of you got cookbooks gathered up collecting dust? Uh, I know how many we moved, okay, when I moved to Greenwood. It takes up a whole cabinet in my kitchen. I, well, some of us are still dragging around Southern Home and Living cookbooks from 19, you know, whatever. <laughs> but the reality is, have I become a better cook if I don't do anything with it? I'm still just boiling water. I'm never looking at a recipe, even if it's on the Internet, and actually trying something. Have I become a better cook? I'm just boiling water. And that's good. I can survive off ramen noodles. I've proved it, okay? <laughs> but when we start looking at verse 10, we, we've grasped nine that God, our Heavenly Father, and by the way, I get He's going to make His kingdom come, okay, with me or without me. But that part of being a disciple, I start to realize that His kingdom both is here and is yet coming. We are advancing God's kingdom today, and yet the full reality of it and Jesus is coming at, at his return. Okay? So I wonder, how do I function in that when I start to move from theory to action? If you're doing your blanks. When I start moving from theory to practice, when all of a sudden I start not only just saying the words out loud... Hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, your will be done. That I might actually start to bring the kingdom of heaven to our community. So that people can see it today. Because I believe that that prayer starts changing us from a theory, the dusty cookbook, to a person who is actually trying stuff in the kitchen, in the community, and yes, I have cooked some of the worst things in the world. The running joke at my house was the cranberry apple delight that my dad tried, and it was awful. And my dad is still making jokes, and he's been dead for 16 years. Okay, that was awful. But the reality is, when all of a sudden I am trying to bring his kingdom come, God's kingdom, it starts to look a little different. So I want, to get, I want to just talk about some stuff on a practical side of how we as a church and how you as an individual can start to help bring His kingdom come to reality. Because when you start praying out this way, it's going to change what you do. Okay? Next month, the third Monday of the month, food bank's coming. I don't know, Renee covered me last time because I couldn't be here. I was at VBS Monday. Can you come and volunteer? How many hours are you here? It's, uh, it's nine. You're basically 9.30 to 1, right? Um, you got to be able to lift a box and to carry it out. But the reality is we had 34 families walk through this building. And it takes a couple of people because you need somebody to help do the truck. You need somebody who can, who's not afraid of people that can talk. 34 families came through. It's the most we've had by, I think, about 10 families. The reality is it's a chance where we can love on people that don't have. We can talk to folks because we, are, we will become known as a community church when we do those things. Okay? So that's, a, that's one of the ways we can do that. It's one of our two partnerships that we're talking about as a church. The other partnership is Rice Elementary. And I wish I was far enough ahead I would have had some of the pictures recently we put 
several folks volunteered, and we, right after school was out, we distributed all of their books in, in, for next year into the teachers' classrooms. The cool thing was, and um, I'm so grateful for the team, people came up and they asked me, what are y'all doing? Richard was, I'm standing in the hall doing my thing, talking to people, and Richard's just grinning going by, <laughs> pushing the thing. He's like, but one person they could ask. <laughs> they ask John. Okay? But, so there's a couple of things that we can do with rice, and we're going to do this at St. Mark as a whole, uh, where we're going to collect school supplies. So the days that teachers report, we're going to try to love very specifically on rice, but most likely a, an additional school uh, that's closer to the St. Mark, the other two campuses. And I hope, I think we can have a list of those things for next week. Okay? So you want to do something next time you're in Walmart, pick up something that you think's on the school supply list. We don't need notebook paper, by the way. They got plenty. All right? So it's a way, because we're going to get to love on folks. And there's a whole idea on the school thing. We're going to, one of the other things you can do the day before teacher's report or that week before, we're going to walk around Rice Elementary. We're going to prayer walk it. The principal's already said we can walk all over the place and pray for it. We're going to hand write a note and put it on each teacher's desk. We're going to have to have somebody who does gift bags. I don't understand a thing out of a gift bag for a teacher. I know they'll like it. That's what I know. <laughs> all right. I need somebody who will say, I want to help us love on somebody to help his kingdom come by figuring out what a teacher needs. And Holly may be the best example of what, since she teaches, to tell us what needs to go in it. But I need some folks who can do that. Okay? Holly, do you think somebody will like a note, a gift bag that they've been prayed for, their kids have been prayed for? Okay? That's the idea of his kingdom come. Then we're going to bring the school supplies that we're gathering across all of our campuses. We're going to feed them that first week, I'm not sure if we can feed them the second day right now because they have to be at the big district meeting. But we can do that. Next week, the idea of elbows that we learned at our church planner training, bring somebody with you. Next week is an awesome week to bring somebody with you because we're going to talk about Jesus. Okay, because all of a sudden when somebody gets loved on, on one of the coolest things for me right now, is I do not wonder whether this body, this group, is inviting people. I wish I knew every church in the world was concerned about bringing folks with them that this group is. Because the numbers would look a little different on how we are doing things. The other thing I would ask you about His Kingdom Come, you think somebody's going to show a little love in heaven? Do you think that will look different than it does here on earth? How is it that you can show somebody that you interact with this week love? How can you offer them grace? Maybe you want to pay it forward or backwards in the Chick-fil-A line. How is it that you can do that? How is it that you can show somebody that his kingdom has come? How is it that you can remember somebody that you know is struggling? One of the easiest things in the world to do is to pick up and call somebody you know that's had an event happen a week or two ago. I, for some reason, God has finally got that through my thick head. And you know what? Every time I do it, I did it last night driving home in a rainstorm from here. That person was just, Tammy was just so ecstatic that I thought about her. And I called to check on her and her daughter. That's one of the easiest things you can do. To call somebody and say, I'm thinking about you and praying for you. I bet every one of you can think of somebody you need to call and say you're thinking about. Maybe there's somebody that you haven't seen in church lately. Or maybe it's somebody that you just had that bond with and you need to say, hey, I'm thinking and praying for you. Because prayer will move us, especially if we pray like this. It'll move us from, I'm a great cook, and all you can do is boil water, to I'm a great cook who is a disciple of Christ where saved people serve people and found people find people part of those five words and phrases that we are bringing God's kingdom to reality today there's enough hurt anger 
in this world. When all of a sudden we start loving people very specifically, that God's kingdom comes right where you are. Because it comes at literally, when you pray this way, it bubbles up over and out of you. My challenge for you this week is to see how you can do that. Um, we're going to have to talk and we've got to work out the rice thing. If you want to help in that area, put it on your connection card or, or start buying the school supplies when you go to Walmart, you know, a couple items at a time so that we actually give more because we don't feel it quite as much. Okay? When you start to say those words, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed, oh, how holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Part of being the Christian Christ has called us to be is that you are bringing the kingdom with you to your community every day in every moment. I'm going to ask our singers to come back up and I'm going to pray for us. If you want to come up, pray. You want to sit right where you are and pray as they lead us with a song. Do that. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for just being able to be in your house. God, to know that you sent Jesus so that we could finally see your kingdom start to truly be revealed here. Help us, Lord. To bring your kingdom wherever we are. Thank you, Father, so much for sending Jesus that we could see your kingdom. Amen.